Podman pods are groups of Podman containers. You can create them and manage them together in a pod. I will use the default Podman of the Debian bookworm. It's version 4.3.1. I will create a new network for playing with different containers. And let's create a pod with the podman pod create command and giving it the IT cafe name. We have created a pod, let's create some containers in it with the podman create command. We give it the pod as a name and we will call it frontend. We will publish the 8080 port of the container and forward it to the port 80 inside the system. I will use the Debian bookworm docker image here. Let's create another container to play with. I won't publish any part of it. And I call it backend. Now we can check if the containers are present. Yes, all of them created. We can start the pod with the podman pod start command. And I have to provide the name of it, of course. At this point, Podman created a control container for the namespace and the two containers that I created. I could start it together. And for one container, the 8080 port is published. Let's see what can I do. I install an Apache 2 into the container 1, the front end, and I'm going to check if I can reach the port 8080 afterwards. I start the Apache now with the Apache CTL and with curl I will check if I can see that port on the localhost 8080. We can see that the frontend works and it can forward any connections to the backend from now. So we can manage our podman pod again. Let's see, it is up. Let's stop the pod with the podman pod stop and the name of the pod. Here I made a mistake, but I will correct it now. Let's remove the containers and the pod. Afterwards this with the podman pod rm command and the name of the pod. No all of the containers and the pod are gone. Another way to create pods when you let the pod to manage the network of the containers inside it. So here I create a pod but I give it a network and I publish the ports of the pod 8080 and uh, 4430 to the 440. Let's see what can I do with it. I call it again IT Cafe and I'm going to create two machines again, but these two machines will have published both the 8080 and the 4430 ports. And it is managed by the pod. So we cannot change this after we created this pod. As you can see now, both of the ports are published on both of the containers. We can try it with installing Apache 
in one container and Nginx in the other. In the server one, I'm going to install Apache again and we will reach it with curl as we have done it before. As you can see, the port 8080 is reachable on server 1. Let's see what happens if we install Nginx on the server 2. Here we have to change the default port to 443. Let's do that with opening the configuration and editing it in Wim. Start the Nginx and again try to curl this. And we can see Nginx is reachable on the server too. So as you can see, with the podman pod command, we can manage containers together. Another great feature is the podman cube command. We can use it to create a YAML file configuration of the pod and import it back to podman or it is compatible with Kubernetes. We can use the podman cube command and the generate option to generate a file after the dash dash file name option and give it a file name and it will generate a Kubernetes compatible YAML file. If we stop the running pod and we remove it entirely from the system, we can recreate it again with a simple command. The command is simply podman cube and the play option followed by the file name. This will recreate or import the system again. And as you can see, there are our running containers that we have created before.